In plane geometry, two lines are hyperbolic orthogonal when they are reflections of each other over the asymptote of a given hyperbola. Two particular hyperbolas are frequently used in the plane, a xy topic 1 with y0 as asymptote. When reflected in the x-axis, a line y topic mx becomes y minus mx. In this case the lines are hyperbolic orthogonal if their slopes are additive inverses, b x2 minus y2 topic 1 with yx as asymptote. For lines y topic mx with minus 1 1 per meter, then y equals 1. The point 1 per meter, 1 on the line is reflected across y equals x to 1, 1 per meter. Therefore the reflected line has slope 1 per meter and the slopes of hyperbolic orthogonal lines are reciprocals of each other. The relation of hyperbolic orthogonality actually applies to classes of parallel lines in the plane, where any particular line can represent the class. Thus, for a given hyperbola and asymptote A, a pair of lines a, B, are hyperbolic orthogonal if there is a pair C, D, such that a C, B, D and C is the reflection of D across A. The property of the radius being orthogonal to the tangent at the curve, is extended from the circle to the hyperbola by the hyperbolic orthogonal concept. Since Hermann Minkowski's foundation for spacetime study in 1908, the concept of points in a spacetime plane being hyperbolic orthogonal to a timeline tangent to a world line has been used to define simultaneity of events relative to the timeline. In Minkowski's development the hyperbola of type B above is in use. Two vectors x y z t and x 1 y 1 z 1 t 1 display style x y z t quad text and quad x underscore 1 y underscore 1 z underscore 1 t underscore 1 air normal meaning hyperbolic orthogonal when c 2 t t 1 minus x x 1 minus y y 1 minus z z 1 equals 0 display style c caret 2 t t underscore 1 x x underscore 1 y y underscore 1 z z underscore 1 equals 0 when c equals 1 and the y's and z's are 0 x does not equal 0 t 1 does not equal 0 then t x equals x 1 t 1 display style frac t x equals frac x underscore 1 t underscore 1 a bilinear form is used to describe orthogonality in analytic geometry with two elements orthogonal when their bilinear form vanishes in the plane of complex numbers z 1 equals u plus i v z 2 equals x plus i y display style z underscore 1 equals u plus i v quad z underscore 2 equals x plus i y the bilinear form is x u plus y v display style shu plus yv while in the plane of hyperbolic numbers w 1 equals u plus j v w 2 equals x plus j y Display style w underscore one equals u plus j v quad w underscore two equals x plus g. The bilinear form is x u minus y v. Display style shu y v. 
the vectors z1 and z2 in the complex number plane, and w1 and w2 in the hyperbolic number plane are said to be respectively Euclidean orthogonal or hyperbolic orthogonal if their respective inner products by linear forms are zero. Given a hyperbola with asymptote a, its reflection in a produces the conjugate hyperbola. Any diameter of the original hyperbola is reflected to a conjugate diameter. The directions indicated by conjugate diameters are taken for space and time axes in relativity. As E. T. Whitaker wrote in 1910, the hyperbola is unaltered when any pair of conjugate diameters are taken as new axes, and a new unit of length is taken proportional to the length of either of these diameters. On this principle of relativity, he then wrote the Lorentz transformation in the modern form using rapidity. Edwin Bidwell Wilson and Gilbert N. Lewis developed the concept within synthetic geometry in 1912. They note, "...in our plane no pair of perpendicular hyperbolic orthogonal lines is better suited to serve as coordinate axes than any other pair." The notion of hyperbolic orthogonality arose in analytic geometry in consideration of conjugate diameters of ellipses and hyperbolas. If g and g represent the slopes of the conjugate diameters, then g g equals minus b two a two display style g g equals frac b caret two a caret two. In the case of an ellipse, and g g equals b two a two display style g g equals frac b caret two a caret two. In the case of a hyperbola. When a equals b the ellipse is a circle and the conjugate diameters are perpendicular while the hyperbola is rectangular and the conjugate diameters are hyperbolic orthogonal. In the terminology of projective geometry, the operation of taking the hyperbolic orthogonal line is an involution. Suppose the slope of a vertical line is denoted infinity so that all lines have a slope in the projectively extended real line. Then whichever hyperbola a or b is used, the operation is an example of a hyperbolic involution where the asymptote is invariant. Topic references G. D. Birkhoff 1923, Relativity and Modern Physics, pages 62, 3, Harvard University Press. Francesco Catoni, Dino Baccaletti, and Roberto Canada 2008, Mathematics of Minkowski Space, Berkhauser Verlag, Basel. See page 38, Pseudo-orthogonality. Robert Goldblatt 1987, Orthogonality and Spacetime Geometry, Chapter 1, A Trip on Einstein's Train, Universitext Springer Verlag ISBN 0-387-96519-XMR0888161JA. Wheeler, C. Misner, K. S. Thorne Gravitation. W. H. Freeman & Co. p. 58. ISBN 0-7167-0344-0